Crow Thoughts. I can't claim that I've ever completely understood Michael Wincott's character's plan. I get that he's, you know, at this point bored with the destruction he's causing, the chaos that he and his crew embody, but I don't know. I don't get the purpose of lighting a lot of buildings on fire, but maybe he is just supposed to be you know, impossible to relate to, and, you know, obviously we shouldn't sympathize with him. It's not that kind of movie. I like the poetic justice of the various deaths caused by the titular character, but with some of them, I mean, lucky him that, you know, the two people he wanted to throw off buildings were, you know, on tall buildings when he got around to it, you know. I do kind of have to wonder if they hadn't been, would he have, like, dragged them up a lot of stairs into an elevator or something, then tossed them off the tall building? You know, what if he hadn't found, what was it, tea bag? Tea? No, that's, that's prison break. Anyway, the tea dude. If he hadn't found him, in the car, would he have, you know, forcefully put him in a car, you know, because obviously he wanted to blow him up, you know, for, yeah. I gotta say my favorite has probably gotta be the knives, you know, and the description, he had knives stuck into all his major organs in alphabetical order. I have read that apparently stuff was cut from the final theatrical release that maybe explains this, but why is it that the powers seem to be going away near the end of the film? Suddenly he's just not invincible anymore. I've heard something about that maybe it's because he had already, you know, he had killed the people who did the wrong to him, but then, you know, what about the guy truly behind it, you know, is this divine retribution kind of deal, does that not go to the root of the issue? Michael Wincott was, you know, get him, and apparently, according to the movie's logic, there would be no more, or much less, of this crime, you know, it's that typical Hollywood kind of thing with, oh, it's this guy, he's behind it all. You know, just take him out and you won't have to worry anymore. We don't have to fix the neighborhoods. But, yeah, why wasn't he also sent back to get rid of Michael Wincott? And, you know, could the powers that crow, I don't know, the beings that gave him this power to come back and be invincible and all that, couldn't they just give him a slight extension, you know, rent due, okay, yeah, and, you know, just let him save Sarah, because that does kind of just a little bit suck if, you know, she has to die just because he didn't quite get everyone. Every time I watch this movie, I think I sort of miss Tony Todd's death. He does die on screen, doesn't he? Is he shot by Ernie Hudson when he goes, you know, charging into the church John Woo style? I guess he does. He's, I believe he's the one with the, you know, rifle with the laser sight. And then, you know, I don't know. It just always passes so quickly or just happens and that's it. And it just seems like a kind of minor thing for a character that had survived for this long. I mean, Ling Bai gets... Anyway, she gets a much bigger, you know, more theatrical death with the eyes being pecked out of her. Which I guess, you know, again, poetic justice, because she had taken other eyes, you know. How is she able to ring the, you know, I, I don't know, I would think that, you know, grabbing it like that 
would really, really hurt your fingers, like your friction burns on your fingers. I wouldn't think that she'd be able to, she rings it like twice or thrice or something before she does fall to her death. Some of the dialogue really did seem a bit much. I don't know, the I like the pretty lights and I don't know, some of the bad guy dialogue in general, just a bit over the top. Yes, I believe that's it for this one, so see you next time.